Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Fast Soft Focus background tutorial, we'll take this picture here and give it this nice soft focus background. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure you click that like button and also subscribe to my channel. If you really want to learn Photoshop, take a look at my complete training, and you'll find links for that in the YouTube cards and also in the description. Okay, let's get to it. To do a fast, soft focus background like this in Photoshop and have it look good really is a matter of working with any little errors that show up and accepting those as opposed to trying to make this thing perfectly clean. For instance, whenever you do a soft focus background, let me just hide this foreground in here, it fuzzes out the image and what that does is it actually blends it or blurs it out a bit along the edges and you can see that blurring along the edges at very, very slight halo. Now, if we did a real super careful selection in here and cut the edges real nice and tight and neat, that would be very, very apparent. So what we want to do is we want to minimize the effect of that and not spend all the extra time it takes to clean those little things up. As you can see here, it looks just fine in this photo. Okay, so we'll start this one off. I'm going to just get rid of these two layers here. Hit the trash can button and just get rid of those. And we'll start off with a clean layer. First thing to do is to make a nice selection around the figure. I'm going to be doing a fast selection. That's all we need for this. So I'll grab the zoom tool here, the magnifying glass. Let's just zoom in a little bit. There we go. And I'll grab the regular old lasso tool right there. Nothing special. Feathering set at zero and making a new selection. I always start just outside of the picture when I do this, that way it's easy to find my beginning spot when I come back around to end the selection. Okay, so I'm just going to come in here and I'm not going to try to be right up against the image. I'm going to leave a little bit of space in there. We'll clean that up as a secondary step. Now when you get to the top like this of your picture, just hold the space bar down and you can move that. Whenever you see the hand showing up like that, that means that I'm holding down the space bar. Okay, I'll just go ahead and go up here. I'm going to not worry about those real fine hairs outside. I'm going to stay just closer to the main mass of hair on this. Again, there's that hand tool with the space bar. And it's clear around the top. We can cut off some of those hairs because, of course, we're using this right onto the same background. So anything we don't see in our nice sharp foreground will just look like a slightly out of focus hair in the background, and that's perfectly acceptable. Okay, just moving on down and come in around again close to the image but not touching it and then one last little move there and back off of the picture down below then just straight across again hold the space bar down and pull straight across back to the beginning and that then completes that selection okay now we can come in and clean this edge up with the refine edge tool now i'm working in Photoshop CC 2017 and they have renamed this tool Select and Mask. It's the same tool though as a previous Refine Edge tool. Click on that. Bring that up. There we go. I'll be leaving all of these settings here at their defaults. I'm not going to bother with anything fancy on this one so everything else is just standard. I always work in the overlay mode. It's just the easiest to see. And right now my brush size is set at 32 pixels which is a good brush size for this. Now to use the tool, you just overlap the area into your mask and to your figure. And then Photoshop goes in and re-examines that edge and makes a new edge on that. Okay, so we'll just pull up through here. Now again, I'll do this in just little, little sections. I'll you know stop like that and then I'll come back in and do a little more. Now let's a program catch up. It's trying to always adjust as you're going here. So giving it a chance to breathe will usually make things run a little bit faster. We lost a little bit in there. We'll fix that up as a cleanup step. And again, whenever you see that hand showing up there, I'm just holding down the space bar just like that to make that move. And go clear up around the top. Again, give it a chance to breathe there for a second and then continue on down. 
and we'll just go clear around the whole figure this way. Again, not trying to be real super accurate with this. I'm just softening up that edge is all I'm really doing, letting Photoshop go and re-examine the edge, and it just softens up that edge. And finish it off right down here at the bottom edge of the picture. And there it goes. There is that pass. Now, let's convert this into a new layer with a layer mask. Just pull the control down here, a slider down here. Output to layer with layer mask and choose OK. So we'll now have two layers. There we go. There's our original layer and here's the new layer with the layer mask. At this point we can now clean up that edge. I'm just going to zoom out on this. Back to fit screen. There we go. So you can see it's a little bit fuzzy around here. Kind of a, a ghosting effect around the edge. So we can go in and we can clean that up. I'm not going to do a lot of time on this cleanup, but it's a real fast cleanup is all we need. Now, we're working on the layer mask side. Look for that outline. If you don't see that, if it's over here, just click on the layer mask side. And white shows, black hides. All you need to remember. I want to be hiding some of this stuff, so let's make our foreground color black. And grab the paintbrush tool. Right now it's set at 125, which is a bit too large. I'm going to bring this back down to oh about 34 35 or so that's a pretty good size and then we'll zoom back in and just work along that edge now all i care about is where things look a little bit weird now you can see there's a bit of transparency in here in this case this doesn't really matter because we're going to be putting this right back on top of itself so we'll see the same shirt underneath and we'll just fill that in so we can ignore that. We'll also be softening down this edge anyway, so you can ignore any little transparency bleed throughs we have there. Let's just look for stuff that's on the opposite side, like we have right here, where I have a bit of the background showing us take care of this. So up here to the brush tool, we had it reset here at 34. It's set for black. And then simply come in and just do a fast cleanup on that. Don't try to be right against the edge. Just a little fast cleanup is all you need. And we'll work around the edge here and just get rid of a little bit of that kind of smoky appearance if you ever see that anywhere in here. Again, don't worry about getting perfect on this. Just stay a little ways away and just knock out a little bit of that smoky effect. That's just that background showing through. And we can take care of that very easily here and quickly just by painting black right onto the layer mask. Okay, we'll finish up real fast and then move on to the next stage. There we go. I think most of that was on the left hand side if I recall. And we'll come down. Looks pretty good along in here. Looks okay down there as well. A little bit right down here we can take care of. There we go. And a little bit right down here. And that's done. Okay, again, don't worry about a little bit of transparency showing in here. That's going to be, just, it'll just disappear as we continue on this process. Okay, back to the zoom tool fit on screen. That's perfect. Let's now show our background, and there it is. So, of course, you can't see anything because we have the background showing through any little problems in the foreground. Let's now take the background layer, drag this down to a new layer, just like that, make a copy of that. I'll hide the background. I have a habit of always doing this, just keeping my background untouched, just in case I have to go back and fix anything. It's right here and easily available. Okay, so on this background here, we're going to blur this out, go up to the filter menu, come down to blur and Gaussian blur. There's the Gaussian blur. It's set right now at 10 pixels. I found this is a good blur for this background. Now if the background is close to your subject like it is here, then you want to have a fairly small number down here. If it's further away, you can go a little larger. Let me show you how, what happens here. If it's too fuzzy, the edge looks really fake. This doesn't look good. If the number is too small, like say about two and a half or so, 
there's not enough blur for it to make any difference. So you want to have just enough so it softens up the background, but you can still kind of see detail. And for this picture, 10 looks just about right. Choose OK. Now when this happens, we get a little bit of a halo showing here, very, very small halo. Now the way that's normally handled is you go onto this layer, you use a clone stamp tool, and then carefully cut into the figure, removing that edge which is becoming your halo. We're going to ignore that step, save ourselves some time here, and we'll just work with this but minimize the effect. You can do that by softening up the edge of the layer mask so that the figure blurs into that halo and it looks like you meant to do it. So on the layer mask side, again, if you're seeing the outlines over here, just click on the layer mask side. Go back up to the filter menu, back down to blur and Gaussian blur. And we're applying the exact same blur. You can't see anything here because we're into the white section. There we go. So there it is without the blur. And there it is with that blur, just softening up the edge of that mask. And when you do that, it just kind of converts the edge here from looking like a kind of a weird halo into looking like you just have this soft focus is blending into the edges of your image and it looks appropriate. Choose OK. So there we go. And there it is. That's all there is to doing a fast technique here and having it work out well. It's really a matter of doing a quick selection and then working with the bleed that you get from your blurred background by also blurring the layer mask in the foreground so it kind of blends in together. And there it is. There is the Photoshop fast soft focus background technique. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.